Hello creative friends, it's Eugenia from Art Metal Time is Atelier and today we are going to do something uh, again I didn't plan. <laughs> uh, my plan was to do the actual um, Halloween uh, picture, uh, this one, but um, I came up with the idea to do a landscape. So that's what I feel for today and uh, that's what I will I will do why not um so it's a lavender uh, field with some water in the front and some uh, uh, trees at the back uh i have my two jars of clean water i've got my sketch ready it's very loose just a few lines and nothing major and um i'm asking my paper on my uh, favorite boards because um, I have told you many times this this ones are just uh, from office works uh, I got them they the plastic uh, they come in a5 and a4 uh, it's just to uh, be able to read and uh, like to, to write uh, on them to with a clip uh, but I, I like them because I can put different kind of uh, projects I uh, could even have one here uh, and um, yeah, each one can carry up to four uh, projects re ready to go and um, yeah, so <laughs> I've got a few lying around here so, and I pick each one that I have the mood yeah, okay, today my mood is love in the fields yeah, okay <laughs> so two days of clean water, a clean paper towel, a masked paper the paper that I have here today is a uh... <coughs> sorry it's the Paul Rubens one. Uh, I've never used this paper before. Yeah, this paper. Um, when I, uh, I bought uh, some, uh, which, uh, I can't remember if I bought the the pretty excellent or I bought the uh, the paper the the set of oh yeah I, I bought the forty eight Paul Rubens uh, tin the professional line and they sent me a, a pack of um, a sample pack oh, I'm going to show you now um, and it contains what is that? what is this? what did I put it? Um, there it is it's a pack of uh, 10 I think it's a f 5 is um, cold press and five uh, hot press uh, papers um, so yeah uh, today I'm gonna use it for the first time it's an A5 size which is yeah, it's, it's, it's good for now and uh, yeah we'll see how this is performing so uh, I think we're ready to go. Uh, I just grabbed this um, um, Daga um, Princeton Ton uh, Neptune uh, brass because uh, I want to be, stay loose at my strokes. And the uh, the colors that I'm using today is um, my collection of uh, the. Um, uh, Daniel Smith ones. Uh, I've got the uh, Jane Haynes um, set here, uh, the 10, and also I've got some um, uh, the metallic ones. Uh, I'm, I haven't uh, filled up completely the uh, the pants. I just put, uh, just sampled them. Uh, and here I've got the. Uh, oops. Uh, here I've got the. Uh, which are the Alvaro and uh, the mixing uh, the the, uh, the six of uh, <clears throat> basic mixing essentials and also the uh, the, the mineral uh, mixing set here so I've, I just got a few sets from Daniel Smith and I am um, yeah I'm getting by with this uh, with these ones for the moment. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good collection, uh, so I'm happy with them. Uh, the, the the Jane Haynes is uh, very 
unique colors which i like and also the the mineral collection uh it's, it's got some really nice ones look it's those ones so th th those two is pretty awesome colors uh, and oh uh, and and, and and the rest uh that i have here from uh, the the alvaro and the uh, essential uh, covering all the needs basically that we have for coloring <laughs> um so let's start it i will start with um actually uh Spraying some water on my paper. Make sure that uh, because this painting is going to be loose, uh, I need to make sure that it's uh, that my paper is uh, all already uh, wet, so that the paint will travel. Spit bottle and uh, for the moment it is very 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 wet so i'm gonna just wait a little bit while my colors are getting uh, softened and i decide which ones i'm gonna use i will start with the background um because it's further away i'm gonna use something uh, cool and um faded so i will get some Imperial purple. Uh, it is a little bit too, too, too cool. So I'm gonna warm it up a little bit with some um, Quinacridone Quinacridon rose, <laughs> and uh, let me just put a little bit to see how it looks. Well, maybe I want it a little bit more bluish, and definitely I don't want it very dark. And uh, for sure, um, I, I don't mind if it is uh, if it bleeds into uh, my trees. Um. I will let it set a little bit. It's not exactly the, uh, what I was thinking, but maybe if I'll add a little bit more to the rain. <clears throat> okay, we'll see how it will dry. We can, I can go always go over it. Uh, I might have to go uh, glaze a couple of times for this painting. Uh, and we're always starting from the brighter to the uh, darker. So let's start uh, making some light green mixes. Um, So I would say on the top of the on the tree tops, as the light hits the leaves, they um, they're very bright uh, green, almost yellow. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just uh, basically. Uh, mapping where the the lighter uh, spots of the trees and the greenery is placed I 
obviously very loosely and definitely we don't mind if we have to go over it to put some more highlights or to make it more intense more, more <clears throat> okay um and then we're going to the next tone in the green now we, we place the uh, very very light colors uh we'll just go into uh, what's color? Uh, I think the this green um, appetite genuine is uh, is a nice green. Um, as kind of a middle tone. Definitely I'm going to have to be going over and over a few times, but that's okay. Um, and then I will mop uh, the really dark areas. Um, maybe I will put this lunar blue. Because I just like it. <laughs> it's... Um, it's a bluish grey, but it's got a little bit. You can get a little bit into greeny side too. Um, this particular subject, it could be uh, actually working out with pastels too. I uh, don't think I'm going to get tempted to finish stuff with pastels. <laughs> uh, you never know. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that would be a nice uh, subject for soft pastels too. But today I decided to make it with watercolors. Why? Because because I felt like. <laughs> Um, okay, so 
I haven't touched the water area yet and I think it's time to do so um, let's create a, a glow it cannot be completely blue because there's so many reflections so I will start with a very very watery kind of blue so I can always go in and add all the reflections so the trick with the watercolors is to start with the, the light the lightest colors and um, even the dark ones you you put the light as possible and then you're building up on them um, because once you get um, uh, yeah once you get the uh, dark colors on your paper you cannot change them as easy I'm not really impressed with this um, imperial it's not okay I have to use some quinacridone rose and a touch of this purple to get something like a lavender nice lavender otherwise it is too purple -ish. It's not exactly the lavender color that I was hoping. Um. If I, if I don't like it, I can always uh, go in with some gouache and um, do some highlights to But um, they always dry up a little bit uh, lighter than once we place them Like this now, this uh, purple here, it's not bad actually It's better than what I thought And of course now we are at the uh, ugly stage of the painting And we have to go through this stage <laughs> Without this stage we cannot move on to the next one We make sure that we are uh, keeping the uh, Where the light comes through I want the light to come through this area here So I make sure that I keep it and uh, at this point I'm going to wait to dry um, before I start going actually no I will work out a little bit on um, on this reflections while they're still wet and I will be waiting to dry up uh, that area so I can go back and start working uh, so let's see now how we're going to uh, approach this um, reflections um, they're drying up very fast I did spray them oh my spritz got okay spritzes again <laughs> somehow they are drying fast okay but they're activating really Quick, so can really complain. Mm. 
There's also a lot of purple. Oops. That's opera pink. That's too punchy. <laughs> okay, we can turn it down. That's why for the reflections we're, we always have to uh, work with the uh, wet on wet technique because um, they need to blend. Um, I just need something really dark. Uh -huh. Part of the what is the lunar blue? Where's the moon glow? The moon glow is this one. Uh, the moon glow, it reminds me in painless grey. Almost. And I don't mind it, I like it. I like painless grey, it's all my paintings. It's a nice um, uh, dark color to do to put the shadows for the shadows for for any that um, for, to create a contrast. Uh, it's not black. Black is not my favorite, but sometimes I need to use it. Um, oh yeah, I've got also neutral tint. It doesn't mind. And um, the, even for the lavenders, if you want to put some um, colors, like to, to make it a little bit darker and more intense at some spots, the best way is to drop some color before it uh, it's dried up. It just spreads nicely. And that's the beauty of the watercolors. I like the actual uh... yeah that's what I was doing uh, I'll mix up the colors I didn't do proper uh... hmm. <laughs> that's why okay oh, I was using the what I was using uh, the moon glow instead of imperial purple okay <laughs> I'll mix them I'm, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've, I've done a mistake with my swatch. I haven't used them for a little while, this uh, palette, and uh, I forgot how to read this swatch. So this is 4, 4, and 2, and then I have this uh, 7 and 3. <laughs> uh, okay.
so basically uh, whatever colors we put on the on the painting we try to put on the reflections too to make them more unified okay and uh, wherever we have some hard edges that we don't want to we can always go in re-wet them and blend them for the moment uh i don't want any hard edges i'm just going back in and i'm just re-wetting them and they're all blending in nicely um this is still well this paper by the looks of it let's, let's talk a little bit about the paper too that i'm using um for first time the paul ruben one uh it is buckling a lot uh i know it, i have heavily weighed it but um that's that's a lot of buckling yeah not very joyful um so yeah i'm gonna have to use it for some more simple uh paintings so i don't have to uh, wet them a lot and i don't have to um put lots of layers okay and now i'm gonna start fast forward a little bit because it might get a little bit um hmm, boring <laughs> point uh how to stop and let it dry i did use my um heat heat tool here this um heating uh tool to dry it up you can use a hair dryer if you don't have one of those it would work the same or you could wait to um, dry naturally which is a better way but um i'm impatient and i just want to move on to my next uh, uh <laughs> the, you know the next stage of the painting and uh i just can't wait um so uh i dried it up and now i got my liner and um i am going to uh kind of do uh, something like a line um uh, liner wash but uh, <laughs> 
um, maybe it won't be line and wash because I'm not using a fine liner. I'm using watercolors. But uh, I'm going to use this, those principles now. I'm going to just do some lines with a, a dry on dry uh, technique. So my paper is bone dry and my uh, brush doesn't carry lots of water. It just gets uh, paint, very creamy paint. And, uh, and I just do some dark uh highlights not highlights because they are they're dark so i'm just working on the contrast now and uh later on once i do this and if my highlights are not strong enough uh, then i will get some gouache and i will put for highlights but uh, first we have to work on our darks and that will indicate how much uh, brighter we have to go. So at the end of the day, it's not how much, what, what colors you're using for a painting to pop up, but it's the contrast. It is the, the difference of uh, the light as it as it falls onto the foliage of this uh, particular painting uh, that indicates um, what is going on uh, as you can tell Ashana put a little bit dark in some spots it looks like that there is another level of uh, the foliage looks like that's a new branch You can even do this monochromatic everything you can do everything in painting monochromatic which means it's all about the, uh, the the dark to light once you get this right um yeah your painting will be making sense and um <laughs> yeah, no, no one can fold it. No one can say that, oh, this is the wrong color that you put there. As long as you put uh, the correct value. So I do feel that I need to put some highlights here and there, but uh, before I do that, I'm going to have to darken a little bit uh, my, it's not sky actually, it's the further away trees. So I'm going to have to darken that area a bit more. And then I will see what kind of highlights I still need to add, if I need to add. But yeah, for the moment, I will work onto my uh, values.
Okay, there we go. I have uh, added all my darks and now I think it is time to add some highlights and, uh, and tone down some areas. So um, I took out my gouache palette that um, I put, up, put together the other day. And uh, I am going to put some uh, highlights obviously on the water. That definitely needs it. And um, I toned down a little bit the... Um, the lavenders so I'll, I'll, I won't work too much on them I'll, I'll let them be <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna just work on the reflections a little bit now um, I'm not very impressed with the paper now the only thing thing I can say say that I might done wrong is uh, and I do have the impression that this paper is a uh, double uh, double side size size so you can use that uh, at any uh, front or back but um, I had that impression so I've used it from the back because the front had a uh, the uh, Paul Rubens stamp on it and uh, yeah and that doesn't help me it's okay if it is uh, like a, a sample but when they give you 10 pieces and they're all stamped it's a little bit annoying <laughs> um, yeah so I turned in the other way and because I needed the full size otherwise I would have cut it um and i'm not sure if that is the problem uh of this paper it's kind of, kind of sizing wasn't i uh, wasn't very happy i can see lots of grainy things happening um and it has nothing to do with the hot or cold press it's uh, how the paper um uh, absorbs the paint so yeah, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to be using uh, it for watercolors. So I'll give it a go on the other side to see if, um, how it works. Maybe it's my fault. I always think that it's my fault. <laughs> uh, but that makes me, uh, you know, try harder and go a little bit further with my investigation for anything. <laughs> So that's okay, it's not a bad thing to self it out first. As long as we don't do it too much. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see what uh, what happens with that part. And um uh, has this painting come up the way I thought? I'm not sure, maybe not exactly. Um, yeah, definitely it would be better uh, try to use it with soft pastels. I think I should tone down a little bit the, the lavender is too punchy. But I used uh, also opera. <laughs> so I think I should just Maybe not, I'll turn them down too much. Um, yeah, so... Ooh. Okay. It's interesting, no? Um... Yeah, maybe I should have tried it with a soft pastels, this subject. But anyway, um, I was happy to pl play uh, with watercolors today. And just for the sake of not be completely... Um, nothing on that lake. 
Oh, that looks good, like a bird. Can't tell much. Yeah, there's an impression of a bird, I think. <laughs> And uh, I think it is time to unmask it. There is a good chance I'm going to be touching it a little bit. <laughs> no, I just put it a little bit further away and look at it this way, look at it that way, and then I'll decide that if I, I do a little bit darker here or a little bit lighter there, but it won't be much of a difference. Like for example now, just touching a little bit. I'm just bringing up uh, some bigger areas with uh, uh, probably big dark areas and make them I'm breaking them up a little bit I mean we're gonna keep going on and on and on like this for all day I just have to decide where to stop. I think it is time to stop. Before I ruin it. I haven't paid attention a lot on here. Maybe I should just put uh, a few more grass lines here. Okay, I think we are done. So probably this time to unmask it and see better what I have achieved today. So um, okay, let's start with this side here. So if you enjoyed this uh, little uh, tutorial, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't. It is uh, I'll try to have make as much fun as possible. <laughs> And uh, I will be saying all the tips and tricks that I know about painting. And I am happy to learn a lot from you too. So please be, uh, feel free to um, give me any tips uh, you know uh, for the materials I'm using or for the subjects I'm doing or if you have any uh, requests feel free to let me know to try to do them um, because that's how we are learning by um, sharing experiences that's what uh, art is all about <laughs> um, yeah I think this side of the paper uh, probably I don't know I'll try the other side. I'm not very happy. It's even peeling when I'm uh, taking off the masking. 
and this is uh, a reusable masking you know me i'm using it again and again so it doesn't tear my paper but this time it did came off a lot of uh, it built um anyway so oh uh, i don't know it is a little bit too uh i don't know not very happy with that well okay um i will think about it it is actually look very similar to the um reference photo so i cannot complain but somehow I, I like the um, reference photo a bit more. I'm a little bit disappointed, but uh, anyway, that's what I made today. Um, so I'm gonna just put my initials. I can't be bothered to use the watercolor because it's not my favorite painting right now. <laughs> so just use the sharpie. Um, anyway, uh, that's what I came up with today hope you enjoyed it i uh, hope you learned from any mistakes that you've noticed and um, if you have any suggestions how to improve this painting please feel free to let me know um and uh hopefully we'll see you soon at my next video uh, till then be happy be creative and keep painting thank you for watching me today bye It's me again. Um, yes, yeah, as I said, as I'm always touching it after I finished my painting uh, or my YouTube painting. Um, so I came back and I done a little bit of glazing to tone down the um, uh, here the trees because they were a little bit too bright and they were just jumping forward. Um, the same with the um, llama de field uh, I, I just had to come in and get a little bit darker uh, areas at the at the back just to make it uh, just to create a little bit depth uh, and um, so I've done that and um, and now what I also have noticed is that I have done the sky and the lavender fields the same color. So that is kind of confusing the our eye. That we can't make it up what is if this is a horizon or what's going on. So uh, I have um, I decided I'm gonna make the the sky or the distant very distant trees uh, a little bit more dark a little bit more blues just to um make it clear to the viewer that um, this is the sky or something very distant and this is another level forward that is warmer and it's the um uh, it's it lavender fields so i'm gonna just darken uh, or make it more cool change the color a little bit make it more blue than purple and um and i think oops ah this paper not happy it is just steering yeah, that's it's lifted and it's not the masking tape that i'm using the masking tape i have used it another two times so it's uh it's pretty it's, it's not very tight at all it's not very tight at all see but uh yeah it's the paper uh so i think now it uh, makes a little bit uh, better sense to my eyes um I'm a little bit happier from than before. Uh, yeah, let me know <laughs> if you prefer um, this one or the little bit earlier stage. Um, looking forward to hear your opinion. Um, it's kind of not sure. <laughs>
thank you again and um yeah looking forward to hear from you bye